in this video we will be making some sails for this boat that I have here. I will be using Maya because that's the modeling package that I'm most familiar with. Okay, so we have this uh, hole here that I created by extruding a, a simple cube. And then we have some pole masts that are basically rotated and uh, scale cylinders. Uh, we will be creating two sail meshes, one triangular mesh for the front sail and a rectangular one for the main mast. Um, I am going to enter the front view here to create the rectangular one. Uh, we will be starting from a plane and I'm going to draw the rough shape of the sail back to perspective view and just move it uh, where it's supposed to be. Now, uh, if we were to simulate this as cloth directly, um, it wouldn't deform at all because it's just uh, two triangles. Uh, I'm going to go to mesh triangulate so that you can see that this is basically just a quad uh, with four vertices. Um, so if we tried to bend this in any meaningful way, uh, we wouldn't be able to, right? Because uh, a single triangle cannot bend. You need multiple triangles moving around for the for the sail to to bend and have wrinkles. So I am going to go to the properties of the of the plane shape. And I'm going to set the amount of vertical and horizontal subdivisions. I'm going to use, I don't know, 16 and 16. Yeah, this is probably going to be okay. Uh, we could go a little bit higher, maybe 24. But remember that uh, the denser your mess, uh, the more detailed it would be, but also uh, the more uh, costly it would be to simulate it because uh, a denser mesh means there will be more cloth particles and more constraints. Uh, so you definitely want to use as few uh, triangles as you can get away with. Okay, don't go overboard with subdividing your meshes. Okay, um, so this is the plane I created. In case you need to uh, scale the plane to adjust it to the shape of your boat, Remember that uh, scaling the plane doesn't actually change the vertex positions in the mesh, it just changes the, the scale of the transform. Uh, when you export this to FBX, this scale will be transferred to the transforms in Unity. Um, so if you're dealing with a physics simulation of any kind, uh, especially with cloth or other deformable objects, uh, having non-unit scale can complicate the setup. So I'd recommend that if you do need to change the scale at some point, uh, you apply the scale back to the vertices. Uh, that's done differently depending on the modeling package you're using. In the case of Maya, you can go to, I believe it was modify, yeah, freeze transforms. And this allows you to inject back the rotation, translation, or a scale into the mesh. In this case, I am only interested in setting the scale back to one, so if I freeze the transform now, you will see that the mesh keeps its size, but the scale has uh, been set back to one, okay? So this operation basically scale the vertices of the mesh and then set the scale of the transform back to one. In my case, this isn't really necessary because I already uh, modeled the plane uh, using the exact size that I needed, uh, but just in case you need to do that, keep that in mind. So to create the second sail, I am going to enter the side view and here I'm going to create another plane and to give it its triangular shape, I am going to enter edit mode um, and then move some vertices around. There's many ways that you can uh, create a triangle in any modeling package. Um, here I'm moving vertices around and I'm going to delete this one. Uh, you could also create a spline and then make a, a 
a mesh out of it uh, and many other uh, there's many other ways to do that so you can just use whichever you're most comfortable with okay uh, now that I have a basic triangle I am going to subdivide it in this case since it's not a primitive uh, like the plane we made before I'm going to use the smooth tool in Maya and I'm going to click it a couple times uh, and that's pretty much it okay so the first thing I'm going to do before exporting this is go into the outliner view or the hierarchy view if you're using uh, blender or uh, basically any other program uh, and I'm going to give appropriate names to uh, all the meshes that we have here um, this would be a full main mast top mast mast um, secondary mast I'm not really a boat person, so excuse me if I'm using the wrong names for those. Uh, this would be the front mast. Uh, main sail. And front sail. Now, uh, we need to have a proper uh, hierarchy for this, so that when we move the hull of the boat, uh, everything else uh, moves with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, begin parenting things uh, and making a hierarchy out of this uh, flat list of transforms that we have here. So I am going to place the top mast and the bottom mast inside the main mast and then place the main mast inside of the hole, right? So we have a hierarchy that looks like this. Now the secondary mast will also be inside of the hull, same from the front mast, and both sails will be inside the hull, right? Um, later when we create the cloud simulation, uh, you will see why I haven't uh, placed the main sail inside of the main mast. Uh, you could do that if you wanted. Uh, but in this case, we are trying to uh, have the simulation happening in the local space of the boat so uh, that we can move the boat around and then have the cloud simulation uh, not uh, be left behind uh, of, the, of the boat. And, and also that way we will be able to control the inertial forces acting on the, on the sails so that if, for example, we rotate the boat very fast, uh, we can control the amount of the world space rotation that affects the cloth, instead of having the, the sails rotate crazily around, okay? So this will be ready to export. I'm going to go to File, Export Selection, and here I am going to select the file typed uh, as FPX. Um, if you're using Blender, Unity supports exporting your things as a blend file directly. Uh, but for consistency, I'm going to use FPX. And this will be it. Boat FPX export selection. And we are pretty much done. Okay, so. Now we are going to import the boat that we just made in Maya into Unity. Uh, here I have an empty project. I just imported Obi Cloth uh, version 6.4. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a new folder for the boat assets that we are going to create. Boat. Okay, I'm going to go into the folder and I'm going to import the boat. 
Okay, so here's the boat we made, and if I click and drag this into the scene, uh, I'm going to move it to the center of the scene, you'll notice it's quite small, right? If you have um, Unity Grid enabled, uh, one cell in the grid is roughly one meter. Uh, you can verify this by creating a simple cube in Unity, which is one meter by one by one. And, and so this is a really tiny boat, it's like a toy boat. Uh, so one thing we could do is just take the boat and scale it up. Uh, there's a problem with this though, and it's uh, one that we wanted to have unit scale in all of our transforms to keep things simple. The second one is that uh, if you're making a game, uh, it's usually implied that a scale of one is the intended size of the object. Anything above one would be making the object larger and anything below would be shrinking it. So if you have a boat whose intended size means you need to scale it uh, by 15 or something like that, later on when you are programming the game, uh, you will find that uh, if you use a scale of one to represent uh, the correct size of objects, uh, that means that the correct size of the boat is this one, which of course is not what you want. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the boat mesh and here change the scale factor. Uh, this will change uh, the size at which Unity imports the mesh into the engine. So in this case I'm going to use 10, which is probably still not enough for a real boat, but okay, that's about a two meters long boat, which uh, I'm going to use in this case. Uh, you could of course change the scale factor to something larger, 20 or even 100 if you want it. Uh, you just need to click apply. Uh, okay, what the heck, I'm going to use uh, this size which is about 20 meters long. That, that would do. Okay, so with this uh, scale and size thing covered, I am going to start to add cloud simulation to the sails. Uh, I'm going to uh, do this from scratch completely. I am not going to use the game object, 3D object, OB cloth menu because that sets up uh, all the components automatically for us. Uh, I am going to do it completely by hand so that you can understand uh, the role of each component in OB. So the first, going to, the first thing I'm going to do is add an OB solver component at the root transform of the boat. Okay? So the solver defines the space in which the simulation will happen. In this case we want to simulate the sails not in world space because that would give us uh, floating point precision problems in an open world game. If we place the boat very far away from the origin, uh, the numbers used to perform the simulation would be in the range of kilometers uh, and that would result in, in issues uh, with uh, vertex positions, right? So instead we are going to perform the simulation in the local space of the boat, which also has some benefits that we will talk about later. Uh, so right, we have our solver component. I'm going to fold all those menus. And now we need to tell uh, OB when we want to update the solver and the simulation inside of it. Uh, that's done using an OB updater component. There's several available. The, the typical one you want to use is the OB fixed updater because in Unity physics are update in fixed update, right? So I'm going to add a fixed updater and the updater has a solvers property. Uh, we need to tell the updater which solvers in the scene should be updated in fixed update. So I'm going to drag the 
boat. And this number here is the main um, quality versus performance um, uh, slider, so to speak, in OB. So if you use a very small number, you will have a very cheap, very low quality simulation. If you use a very large number, like, uh, I don't know, 12, uh, that would mm, give you a very high quality simulation, but of course that would affect uh, performance. The default of, of 4 is usually uh, a good compromise, so we will leave it at that, that default value. Uh, okay, now we are going to actually add the cloth components to the sales. So OB cloth renderer, and it will automatically create an OB cloth and an OB cloth renderer component. Same for the front sail, OB cloth renderer, and there we go. Now, as you can see, the cloth components take a blueprint as input, which is the definition of the, of the cloth. Uh, the good thing about decoupling the cloth component and the blueprint is that, that, that you can reuse the same, uh, the same cloth definition for several cloth instances in your world, right? Uh, this is not just from a workflow or from a user point of view, but actually the, a lot of the constraint data used uh, for each individual cloth will come from the cloth blueprint. So you're actually saving memory by using the same blueprint for several cloth instances in this thing. Right, so I am going to right click in the project, create OB cloth blueprint. I'm going to call this main sale and I'm going to duplicate it to create the front sale as well. We will start with the main sail, uh, select the input mesh for the blueprint, which would be this one, and OB is telling us that the input mesh is not readable. Read write must be enabled in the mesh import settings. Uh, we could manually go here to the boat and then click uh, read write enable, uh, but OB is kind enough to to fix that for us. Uh, now we will click generate to generate all the particles and constraints uh, from the mesh that we are using here. And once the generation process has been done, we can click edit and uh, it will ask us to save our current scene if we haven't yet because the, by editing the blueprint we will enter a different scene which would be the blueprint editor right so i am going to say yes i want to save the scene i am working on call it boat and all we will take us to the blueprint editor here the only thing we have to do in this specific case for sales, is uh, create a couple particle groups that we will later use to attach the sail to the to the mast of the boat. So I am going to select all these particles at the top, and here in particle groups, I'm going to click the plus sign and create a new group called top. Okay. Now I am going to deselect all the particles select the ones at the bottom. Uh, in this case I selected three extra particles, so I'm going to click shift and drag to deselect them and create a second group called bottom. Okay. Now uh, if you select the groups, like I want to select the top particles or select the bottom particles, you can verify that the correct particles have been added to each group. Right, we are done here, so we click done to close the blueprint editor, and we can now uh, drag the main sail blueprint into our OB cloth component for the main sail. Um, right now, if I click play.
the sail will just fall due to gravity because we haven't attached it anywhere okay so we are going to add a couple OB particle attachments the first one would be attached to the bottom mast which is this guy here and mm, the second one will be attached to the bottom mast of course we need to also specify which particle group in the blueprint we want to attach to those transforms so the bottom mast is going to control the bottom particle group and oh sorry I accidentally used the bottom mast twice okay and the top mast will control the top particle group if we click play now okay you will see that the cloth stays in place now if you move the boat around it will look like there's no cloth simulation at all uh, but this is because the simulation is happening in the boat local space so if we move the boat around uh, the simulation is unaffected we can uh, go to the OB solver component and under simulation settings we can control the amount of linear inertia and angular inertia that gets uh, injected from world space into the solar's local space right so if we wanted the sail to move around when we move the entire boat we could crank up the world linear inertia scale and now moving the boat results in some cloud simulation okay the same applies to rotation if we rotate the boat like this nothing will happen unless we increase the world angular inertia scale a little bit this will add a centrifugal and Coriolis force to your cloth simulation okay I am going to leave them a little bit higher and we are going to repeat the same uh, operation with the front sail going to click the blueprint select the front sail generate it and enter the blueprint editor I am going to select uh, the particles at the corners here this one will be the top particle group this one will be the bottom part oh sorry I'm overwriting the first uh, group I need to create a new one this would be the bottom one and this one would be the front one Once we are done, we exit the Blueprint Editor and again just drag the front sail to the Blueprint. Same as before, if we don't attach the sail to anything, it will float down. So create um, three attachments, in this case, particle attachment attachment and particle attachment and same operation one would be attached to the front mast and uh, the other two would be attached to the secondary mast front mast would be the front particle group secondary mast the top and the bottom Okay, so we have some nice cloud simulation going on. Another thing that might be interesting to have is some wind blowing on our sails. To do that I am going to create a new game object and add an OB ambient force sound component to it. This is a uniform wind field um, that will affect any solvers that we drag here in the affected solvers list um, now we have to specify an intensity for the wind I am going to say 10 
remember that intensity is a force, so depending on how heavy your cloth is, it might be more or less affected by the same wind intensity. Um, you can check the mass of each particle in your cloth by going to the print editor and then selecting a particle. Uh, here you can see that this particular particle has a mass of 0 0.004. However, if I select a particle that's, that's inside of the cloth instead of at the edge, you will see that mass is pretty much double that amount. It's 0 0.008 kilograms. This is because the initial mass for the particles is automatically calculated from the triangle area around them. Right? You could use any value that you like here. Uh, same is done for the radius of the particles, which you can check by enabling particle rendering here. Uh, so the mass and the radius values uh, are okay in this case, so I'm going to leave them like that. And back to our scene, I'm going to click play and hopefully see the effects of wind blowing. Okay, so we have some wind going on. As you can see, uh, since the wind is blowing directly onto the sail end, perpendicular to the normal of this one, uh, both are mm, bouncing around a little bit because of um, lift forces, right? If you were to select the cloth, you can see here under the aerodynamics constraints that you have scale values for drag and lift. If I say there's zero lift for the front flag, you would see it sways a lot less. I'm going to use the original amount. And the same could be said about the main one. Usually you'd want for about uh, to have a wind that, that blows uh, slightly slanted compared to the direction of the boat. Um, so this is pretty much it. Uh, you could add some turbulence to the force on if you want. I don't know, maybe a turbulence of 4 would make it move a little bit. Turbulence of 10 and increase the turbulence frequency. And as you can see the arrow is moving a little bit, changing the wind intensity, and as a result, the flags, sorry, the cells move around as well. So this would be pretty much it as far as cloud simulation for a boat is concerned. Uh, in case you would want the cloth to collide with other objects in the boat, for instance this mast here, which would be a nice thing to have. What you can do is select the mast, add a capsule collider in this case, uh, it also works with box colliders or sphere colliders, mesh colliders, whatever, and then add an OB collider component which will wrap over the capsule collider and make OB aware that this is something that we want uh, OB actors to collide against. Uh, that would be the result. Okay, so see you in the next video.